I'm Riley Klitsky. I'm out of the Hastings location. Um, I do sales there, and we're going to go over the 70 series combine uh, right hand console controls. Okay, we're in a 70 series combine here. Um, we're going to go over the right hand console here. Uh, we'll start with the joystick. This is going to be your auger functions, your unloading tube uh, in and out. This is going to be on with your unloading tube, your header functions up, down, and your contour master left and right tilt. Um, this is going to be for your reel functions in, out, up, down, and also your deck plates. These are going to be your automatic um, return to position buttons, which are set up in the display. We'll move over to the console. This is going to be your separator engage, your header engage and reverse, your road mode uh, that locks out all your functions on your head, high idle, uh, wide open idle, your parking brake. This combine is equipped with a Pro Drive, so you're going to have your one and two and your auto button. Uh, this is going to be your home buttons since we're not with, working with the touch screen here. Uh, you can use your buttons at the top of the screen or you can use your buttons here to navigate through the screen. Uh, this one here is going to pull up a prompt. It's going to be your rotor clearance. Uh, the next one up is going to be your lower speed, raise speed on your header. Next one up, it's gonna be your hydroflex pressure if you're running a flex head. Going right here, you're gonna have belt speed on your draper head. Going down, we're gonna have rotor speed. Below that, we're gonna have chaffer position uh, that you're all gonna set with the dial. Going right, we should have sieve position, fan speed, and this button, this scroll here is going to be after you've engaged your uh, automatic return to cut, you're going to adjust your head height using this dial. And then your reel speed is going to be here. And all of these are going to show up a prompt on the screen. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and run through some of the buttons on our command center display in our uh, 70 series combine. Uh, we can see as we navigate through the display, we've got these buttons across the top that correspond with these buttons down here. Uh, so we're on home page one of two, we can see. If we push this button, it takes us uh, to our readings page. Uh, that's basically just going to show us what all of these settings are. And we can use our scroll wheel on the armrest uh, and the check mark to also click through those. And if we wanted to change some of these readings, could use the check mark and change uh, what we're seeing on the second home page there as well. Moving over to the crop page, uh, this is going to show us um, our field average um, and then we can also see what our moisture is. So we can change that from wet to dry and it shows our header width. If we push that button again on top, it takes us to page 204. Uh, this shows us some totals related to the crop. Uh, we can see our productivity. We can come in here and if we hit the zero button, it's going to zero out some of these readings. We'll go ahead and hit the third page. If you're not running a green star display with this, uh, you can keep track of your farm or field totals. If we have a client farm and field set up, this is where we would come to do that. We'll hit the check mark and then you can come in here and scroll and set up your farm names. And then we'll hit enter and it will save the farm name in there. And then you can see field totals um, and moisture and some of the stats that pertain to that field. Uh, 404, this is where we would come in and change our crop from beans to corn or corn to beans or wheat or whatever we're doing. The next button over is our combine. Uh, this shows our default combine settings for soybeans. If we hit that button again, uh, this is going to pertain to our harvest track monitor up on the corner post. And this is going to show our flexible draper. This is where you could come in and change the width of your head if it is not correct and not matched up to the head that you have on it. This is also where we would change our record stop height. Uh, this is where it's going to start recording our yield and moisture on the display. So to set our stop height, we just raise the head where we want it to turn on and off. And then we will hit the check mark and it will change that percentage and that will be our new record stop height. So when we lower the head below that point, it will start recording. Next button over is our moisture alarm page. 
And then the last one is Harvest Smart. Um, if you are running Harvest Smart, you can come in here and adjust some of your target uh, speeds and response rates. The next one over is going to be our book with the wrench diagnostics. We've got active alarms, our calibrations, got some diagnostic readings to go in and look at some sensors and voltages, and then we've got on page four for our special test. And so that concludes kind of the buttons that we can see here on our command center display on our 70 series combine. We'll start at the bottom here in the 70 series. These are just going to be how you want your display to uh, read. We're going to have hours, rotor speed, fan speed, clearance, and this is just going up and down through the wheels so you can set what you want for uh, readings. Moving up, these are just going to be turning on and off your automatic functions. Uh, re real return, uh, contour master, on off, your return to cut position. Okay, now we're going to go through some um, 70 series combines, um, calibrations. Um, so first thing what we're going to do is we've got a corn head hooked on. Uh, we're going to go through some of the calibrations that you'd want to do when you first hook up to a, a machine or a head. Um, so on the 70 series, um, on our display, we've got these buttons across the top. Um, we're going to hit the button above the book of the wrench twice, and that brings us to our calibrations page. And then we use our scroll wheel down here and our check mark to select our drop down menu. And the first one on the list is deck plate spacing. So if we use our check mark and hit deck plate spacing, uh, it says the requirement of engine running at low idle, we'll hit save and enter. And it's going to ask us to fully close the deck plates. They are fully closed on the corn head, so then I'll scroll over and hit the next button. It wants us to fully open the deck plates. They are fully open now, so we'll hit the check mark again. And the calibration is complete. Um, on the 70 series, we want to make sure to save our calibrations by hitting uh, the save and enter button and it brings us back to our calibrations page. So that was our deck plate spacing calibration. All right, now we're going to do um, our header calibration. So if we touch on the button above our book with the wrench twice, um, we're going to scroll down and find our header. We need to have the combine at level on level ground running at high idle, so I will idle the combine up and hit enter. We've got to lower the feeder house resting on the ground. Once we do that, we'll use our knob and our scroll wheel and our check mark to go to the next step, and it's going to have us press and hold the header raise switch. That calibration is complete, so we'll hit the save and enter button there, and then it's going to take us right into the performance tuning calibration. Now it wants us to hold, press and hold the header lower switch. It's going to bounce us around a little bit, and then we're going to select calibration complete. We're going to save and enter. Um, that is our header calibration on a 70 series machine. Okay, next we're going to go and do a uh, feeder house raise speed calibration after we've hooked up to our corn head. So if we touch our book at the wrench twice to get to our calibrations page, use our scroll wheel and our check mark, and then we're going to scroll up to feeder house speed need the combine running at high idle on level ground. We're going to hit save and enter. And we've got to lower the feeder house so it's resting on the ground. And we're going to scroll to the next page button and hit the check mark. And we're going to push the push and hold the header raise switch. As we're doing this, it's going to um, pump oil to the the raised cylinders on the feeder house 
and it's going to figure out um, how much is required to get this to, to raise at a desirable speed. It's going to have us raise and lower the head quite a few times here. And the first few times will be pretty slow um, as we get going through here. Uh, they will start to increase in speed. See, it's getting a little bit faster between the steps. We're in step 12 of 21. See, it's getting faster here towards the end. And our calibration is complete. To remember to hit the check mark while we've got the inner arrow highlighted to save our calibration. That was our feeder house speed calibration. Now we're going to do the moisture uh, sensor calibration. If we hit our book with the wrench a couple times to get to our calibrations page, we're going to hit the check mark and then we're going to scroll down till we see moisture. Uh, basically, if we have to replace the moisture sensor for any reason, or if we uh, go in there and adjust the plunger on there at all, we'll want to do this. Um, it says we're about to calibrate the moisture sensor. It needs to be empty and clean, and then the engine must be off. Uh, as we do this, it's going to cycle that plunger inside of the moisture sensor. And then if it cycles successfully, we're going to get the calibration complete. And that is how we calibrate the moisture sensor on a 70 series combine. The next calibration we're going to go over uh, for our 70 series machines is to um, calibrate our moisture. Um, so if we are um, reading on our combine that we are in uh, 15 moisture corn and we're going to the elevator and they tell us that our uh, corn is actually 17 and a half. Um, I'm going to show you where to go in and adjust that at here on our 70 series um, command center. So what we'll do is we'll hit the button above the combine uh, about four times and that brings us to our moisture page. Um, we can use the scroll wheel to scroll. If you want a, a alarm on you can turn that on by hitting the check mark and then you can turn on um, your maximum or minimum values that you want it to alarm you at. The sample rate, um, typically we'll do it at um, one once a minute um, just to save the life on that plunger and that moisture sensor. So right now we have a moisture correction in here of one point, a negative 1.3. So to adjust that we just click on that box and change it. Um, so in my example of our combine was showing 15 moisture and the elevator told us we had 17 and a half. You would just uh, hit the check mark while you got this box highlighted and adjust it to 2.5 um, and it will correct our moisture up to a positive two and a half. Uh, so if we uh, have any issues with our moisture sensor we might want to go ahead and just put a fixed moisture in there so it will still calculate our yield and document everything correctly. So if we put a check mark in the fixed moisture, uh, we know this field that we're in is doing 17 and a half. We can just dial this fixed moisture reading into 17 and a half and it will just assume that all the grain coming through the machine is at 17 and a half moisture. Uh, this is a good tool if, like I said, for instance, your moisture sensor has stopped reading and you want to just keep going until uh, we can get a, a tech out to help you in the morning or you don't want to stop to fix it till the morning. So that is how uh, we go in and adjust our moisture. Okay so now we're going to go through uh, yield calibration on a 70 series uh, command center display. Uh, so first thing we're going to go to our calibrations page. We're going to hit the button above our book with the wrench twice to get to our calibrations and then we're going to use our scroll wheel and check mark 
to get to our drop down menu. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom to where it says yield and we're going to hit the check mark. So when you might calibrate your yield is if your combine's um, showing you a yield that you know is off uh, or if you're just looking um, to have a more accurate yield reading. Uh, so we've got three buttons across the bottom here. This button will take us back to the previous screen. If we have a, a load that has already been collected but we haven't gone in and applied it uh, to our calibration, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, if we go into that screen, if we hit this next arrow, it's going to start a new calibration. So we've got calibration mode standard or low flow. Um, how we might in high yielding corn, if you needed to do a low flow calibration, you would just adjust your speed back uh, to have a, a lower flow coming through the machine. So we'll hit the next page button. At this point, we would start harvesting. Uh, we can see this bar graph over here. It's going to uh, show as we are collecting grain, it's going to come through there and then it's going to show our harvested weight. Now we have to have 3,000 pounds of harvested weight before we can continue and finish our yield calibration. It will not let you finish until then and it'll tell you it failed. So once we have a yield calibration in there, we would be able to go to our loads page and apply those calibrations to um, our machine. Um, that is how we go in and, and perform a yield calibration on a 70 series combine. The next calibration we're going to go through on our 70 series command arm display is going to be feeder house tilt. So again we're going to go and push the button over our book with the wrench. We're going to go to calibrations, hit our drop down and we've already got feeder house tilt on there. And hit the check mark. It says it wants the engine running at low idle. We'll highlight our arrow and then hit our check mark on our armrest. It wants us to tilt the feeder house all the way to the left. Once we've done that, we'll use our scroll wheel and check mark to go to the next step where we'll tilt the feeder house all the way to the right. We'll hit our check mark again. And it wants us to center the feeder house. There's a little indicator uh, right in front of the steering wheel that helps to kind of center the feeder house up. Once you get it to where you feel is center, hit the check mark again and it will say calibration complete. And we'll want to make sure we save that calibration. Uh, when it kicks us back to our calibrations page, we know that uh, we have successfully saved the calibration and we are good to go. So now we're going to run through uh, some header calibrations for a flexible draper on a uh, 9770 combine. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to our book with the wrench and it'll be on our second page. We're going to use our scroll knob and check mark on the armrest to scroll down and find our feeder house speed. If we have never hooked onto a header before, um, it'll show this on pop-up that we need to calibrate our feeder house speed and our header. So we'll start with the feeder house speed. We need to be on level ground with the engine at high idle. We'll hit the save and enter button. It's going to want us to lower the feeder house with the header resting on the ground. Then we'll use our knob to go to the next page. And we're going to press and hold the raise switch. These first few times up and down it will operate fairly slow. Um, as we get towards the end of the calibration it will uh, speed up a little bit and start raising and lowering a little bit faster. Switch to the header lower, so we're going to hold the lower switch. Back to the rays. A 
lower again, about halfway home here. You can see that it's starting to raise a little faster, uh, but still keep it smooth as we're getting to the raised position. That calibration is complete, so we'll use our scroll knob and make sure to hit the save and enter button and don't hit the abort, otherwise we'll have to do it over again. And that is our feeder house speed calibration on the 70 series combine. Now we're going to do a header calibration for a 70 series combine and a flexible draper head. Um, so to get to our header calibration, we're going to go to our book with the wrench on top. We're going to hit this button twice. To get to our calibrations. We're going to use the knob and the check mark to select our header calibration and then we're going to select our save and enter. We do have to have the combine on level ground with the engine running at high idle. We're going to go ahead and hit the check mark. So we're going to lower the feeder house with the head resting on the ground and then we're going to go to the next step it's going to ask us to press and hold the header raise switch. We've got the flex mode calibrated, so now we need to navigate to our next page button and hit the check mark. And then save that calibration. And then it's going to take us into the performance tuning calibration. So we'll use our scroll wheel and our check mark to hit the next page, and it's going to ask us to hold the header lower switch. So I'm just going to bounce us a little bit to fine tune these sensors. The calibration is complete, so we can go ahead and hit our save and enter button, and it kicks us back out to our calibrations page.